Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Coffee with Bobby. Today, I'm having coffee with Janice Lucan. She is a practitioner and teacher of the Buteco Breathing Method, a form of complementary medicine that teaches clients good breathing skills as a treatment for eliminating the symptoms of respiratory problems like asthma, anxiety, panic, stress, allergies, and other medical conditions like high blood pressure, digestive issues, and COVID, to name a few. Janice moved to Georgia after several decades in Los Angeles. She practiced Aston Kinetics Bodywork, movement, and was an ergonomic consultant and practitioner of healing and energy modalities. With a life philosophy of living in peak mental, emotional, and physical states, she has found alternative forms of healing to be less invasive, cost-effective, and offering the most benefit in her own personal health and life challenges. She has partnered with medical doctors, osteopaths, chiropractors, and dentists to offer their patients relief with Buteco breathing methods. Janice, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. Those are really in now. So it's a big opportunity for me to. I am so, I'm so grateful that you are here with us today. You are an expert in your field, especially when it comes to health and healing and breathing. So tell us a little bit about what's new in your world lately. New in my world lately, I've been doing a class on Zoom, it was one of the first times I've done a group. Um, and I was specializing in helping people who might have allergies and are, you know, continuing to have to use medicines and avoid going outside and all that, all that kind of thing. And if they have good breathing skills, uh, then their allergy symptoms are pretty well taken care of. And that means all kinds of allergies not just the pollen allergy, so yeah. Does this include food allergies as well? Yes. The commonality of that is stress. Whenever we have an allergy that begins to be activated, it's stressful for us in many ways. You can imagine if you had bad experiences, that comes right up. And uh, so the breathing, if you learn, uh, you know, to breathe well, so that your breathing is flexible and serves you, then um, you're pretty set all the time. It's a practice, learning to breathe um, with some skill and understanding. So it, it's a good thing. Because when you do have allergies, when I was younger, I had seasonal allergies and then I went through a bout of digestive issues and then there were food allergies that came along with that. And you're so right, like emotions come up, you're stressful, you're in the hustle and bustle of work culture and it just ignites those receptors to go off in our cells saying, nope, I don't like this, we can't do this today. And then your body goes into sort of a fight of flight or You're fight. Fine, yes. With yeah, yes. Or if it gets terrible, you freeze and hope, hope you live through it. So yeah. exactly. Especially when you're talking about people who have extreme peanut allergies, yeah. egg, things like that as well. And and there are medicines that that we've learned to use, and a lot of our doctors will prescribe them for us. They do have some side effects and while they will get us okay for a while, um, it's good to have a backup, like a plan where you know that you can breathe your way out of it for just a short time. And not only breathe your way out of it, but teach your body how to heal itself, yes. correct? Well, the healing would be just to prepare yourself. Our bodies breathe for us. Mostly, we do not have to plan <laughs> to monitor if we're breathing in or out or if we've forgotten or something like that. No, but, and if our breathing system is working well, um, it, it does the right thing. It, it gives us a big breath if we need that. We're active. 
if we're sitting, reading, or being quiet, our breath will get smaller and the volume of air that we breathe in each time is, you know, appropriate to what our needs are. If we are um, stressed by even something that hasn't happened, may never happen, just in our imagination, we're fearful of it. We, our breath is really, really sensitive and it begins to speed up a little bit. We'll take in a little more volume of air. And if, if everything goes well, that, that stops and we go back to a more up and down normal way of doing our breathing. But if we are continued to be stressed, like if we had illnesses for a period of time or a situation where we're just not as comfortable, our breath will start to increase so that there are ways to measure your breathing rate. <clears throat> so if you breathe in and out for a minute it, and you count it how many times, like a breath in and a breath out is counted as one and then breath in, breath out two and so on. If you breathed in 12 or less, that's a good breathing rate. It indicates that your volume is serving you and probably going to be feeling good. Um, if it's higher than that, then it's an indication that you might have a breathing pattern disorder and that um, there are many. <laughs> You know, uh, but um, a practice of learning some breathing exercises. That's how I teach. I, I help people to understand what their respiratory system looks like and feels like and to be aware of how they, they're breathing. And um, then we do the exercises and we select something that's good. Sometimes you may, uh, because I, I'm not used to doing podcasts so much, yeah. I, might, I might forget and breathe through my mouth. <laughs> it's good always to breathe through your nose. <laughs> that, that, like just now. I, <laughs> yeah, when you, the nerves get to you or something like that, or a little bit of stress. And we can all relate to this because it's normally we don't even think about breathing. We just oh, say, you know, yeah. our body's doing it for us and whatever rate it's going at, that's where it needs to be. That's correct, and, yes. Absolutely. And I know for a fact that the Navy SEALs do it as well. And yes. Yes. I got into it with the box breathing mm -hmm. a little bit with the four counts to instantly calm yourself, which helps. But it's those things that we don't even think about that it affects us down the road. Yeah, I, I made a little list here in case I was so nervous. I'll just run down at it. As you said, it, it increases the uptake and uh, delivery of oxygen to all of our cells, which give us energy. Um, and it also at the same time can help us have good circulation in our body or good blood circulation to all the cells. Um, and I want to add yeah. into this here a second, Janice, because circulation is key for longevity. Absolutely. Key for life. I mean, you're speaking truth here and not only just telling us how to breathe and being um, a part of different healing modalities throughout your career, but just by looking at you, you look absolutely amazing. <laughs> like you look like you could be my mom's age. <laughs> Kid you not. And then when I found you on TikTok and we're like, you posted that you're 91 years old. I was like, no way. In March, I was 91. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. Like you're practicing what you preach, you've taken it to heart and it truly speaks for itself. Like when you take care of your body and take care of yourself through simple practices, right? it pays off far, far down the line. It does. Our lifestyle, we, in functional medicine, 
Now we call that our lifestyle, all those, you know, extra things that we do for ourselves that we found work, you know, for every, every bit of us. Um, you know, I've, I've used uh, in my life acupuncture at, at times. Um, I pretty much daily um, do some Qigong exercises and um, I have some time when I read uh, inspiring things and do some meditation. So um, a nice thing about being old is your life is usually slowed down. So <laughs> you're not so rushing about, you know, that, that's a good thing. So, yeah. And then was it busy at once or like felt like more rushed earlier on in your life? Well, that, that's kind of interesting that you brought that up because people say, well, how did you get into this? What, you know, what brought you to think about breathing? And um, I was, um, I have three uh, grown children, of course, now, but one of my daughters was having some sleep difficulties and she found out about um, a Buteco training. So she said, uh, mom, will you go with me? And I said, okay, you know, I wasn't, I thought, okay, I'll just go. And um, a, a couple of weeks, it was a three, a three day thing at, at that time. That's how Buteco was taught. You attended a group starting Friday evening, a couple of sessions Saturday, a couple of sessions Sunday. So you were taught all the exercises. You were taught to understand how it worked. And I, I did all that. I learned some things and uh, didn't think about it. A couple of weeks later, uh, I noticed that I was breathing through my mouth. I was hurrying. I was late for a meeting. And I was actually running down the hallway to an elevator uh, to, to, to go to my parking. And I, it, it came to me, oh, <laughs> you're pretty stressed. So I, I began to remember what I'd learned and it absolutely, you know, breathing can be very transforming. And my, I realized how anxious I was then at, at times, uh, you know, it felt like my life kind of fell into place. I, you know, a, a normal person would have said, oh, you have a great life. And your children are fine, your family, your husband, you have a practice, but it changed. It really did. And breathing can give us calmness and a, a, a way to be in touch with uh, ourselves in a way that is remarkable. It's very quick. If you have practice, have some confidence in your breathing, um, you can calm yourself pretty quickly. It, it's, it's, it's very good. So, and this can be such a simple thing. You know, when you learn how to breathe properly, you're not always relying on pharmaceutical drugs. If you have high anxiety or different things, like you learn how you can help your body and get in tune with everything. So it's in this state of flow, like right. we're all meant to live. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, the, and, and the way we breathe has such an enormous, um, uh, effect on our total health. Learning to even be aware of, of your breath is, is kind of strange. And when people hear me say that, that that's what I teach, they, <laughs> There, there's sort of a, a pause and a disbelief and um, a what is it? Wait a second, that is a real career. You know, like I'm sure that's some of the looks they get like, what are what? you what? <laughs> doing? Breathing, we do that on our own. It's come into prominence now. And um, when I started, it was practically unknown or not, not popular. There are many books about it on, you know, if you're on Facebook or Instagram or one of the other social medias, 
you will find people talking about breathing and sometimes teaching about it, mentioning it. If you're interested in learning or, or working on meditating, sometimes people, they struggle with that. They, 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 they just can't get it quite right. Um, breathing is really helpful. It is a fast way to reach a place where you're just meditating. And it, in a sense, when you get the breathing right, it just slows your body down. So it, you're not in the state of like overthinking, like, how am I going to be quiet for 10 minutes to meditate? Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. However you do it. Uh -huh. So um, people can become more responsible in that way because they have the built-in skills. They know they can rely on it. A lot of times people are interested in speaking or singing or even competing in a sport. And people who are uh, actively running or um, competing in, in any kind of sport now are very active in learning to breathe through their nose. At one time, runners ran with their mouths open. And now that's just part of their training. So people who, um, you know, are, are looking at that um, can, can learn to, to use their nose for breathing. So, um, I can only imagine runners running with their mouths open because I enjoy running and a huge fan of fitness and staying healthy. Yes. So you're preaching to the choir on this one. And I'm like six miles with your mouth open of breathing. Like that would be a real struggle. Like I can't yeah. even imagine it. Yeah, it's, it takes a little while. There's a learning curve, but um, people do much better when they're, you know, they've gone through that and they're training in that way. Exactly, um, when you learn how to breathe through your nose and, you know, learn how to absorb the oxygen properly through our cells and calm right. our bodies down through all of the stress. Right. Would you like to do a breathing exercise? Sure, let's do a breathing exercise. Okay, so notice how you're sitting, that your body's in a, a, a good posture, one, one that you have your feet on the floor and you can feel your legs and pelvis and your upper body and neck and head and can feel the way they're all connected. and You'll notice as you're breathing right now, just put your attention on it and take some good normal breaths, not, not tiny ones, but not giant ones, but just be with your breathing and notice that when we breathe, it moves our body. And as you're kind of feeling the breath as it enters your nose, you can even feel how long it takes you to inhale. So, and you can notice how pleasurable inhaling is. We like it. I guess we know we're getting the payoff of oxygen. So we, we use it every time we start something. It has a really big energy, just a normal breath in. You can feel the temperature of the air. If there's something you're smelling, you would become aware of it. It's a special time every time we breathe in. It's kind of the yang part of our breath. Now switch over and feel your breath out. And it's a whole other world it, it's you know breathing in was had some power this is relaxing it's calming and it's the more yin part of our breath it's even kind of hard to tell how long our breath out is our exhale sometimes i have people take 
their finger and put up just under your nose. And as you breathe out, you can feel the breath coming out. And you can tell that it's strong at first and it kind of relaxes. So because the relaxation part of our breath is very important to calming and collecting us, we start by kind of just letting our breath finish up as we breathe out. So we're breathing in and we're breathing out. So do that for a few minutes. Just be aware of your breath in and out. And as you become aware of letting all of the air come out of your exhale, consider that you're going to make a small pause after your exhale so that instead of just breathing in right away, like we do, you're going to see if you can just rest for a moment. So breathe in, breathe out, and pause. Breathe in, and breathe out, and pause. Do that a few more times. And while you're doing that, I'm going to say a few words. So notice that you've changed your breathing just a little bit. So your, your body's gonna start to notice. And just be aware if you begin to feel a little different. You might not. So as you're breathing in and breathing out and pausing, next time around, pause two times so it's Breathing in, breathing out, pause, pause. Breathing in and breathing out, pause, pause. Keep doing that for a second. Now I'm gonna give you a challenge. Next time around, after the second pause, add another pause. So you're breathing in, you're breathing out. Pause, pause, pause. Breathing in, breathing out. Pause, pause. Do that a couple of seconds longer. And again, notice how your body feels. It might be responding in some small way. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to stop making the pauses. And you'll return to your normal breathing. And when you do that, don't talk yet, but begin to notice how your breathing is. I think you'll notice something different. Maybe, maybe not. So stop making the pauses. And share with me but you noticed if you were doing it, I wasn't sure. <clears throat> yeah, for me, it's like instant relaxation. It yeah. takes my body back down and just slows everything down. Like I could feel it more so in my abdomen, diaphragm, just like slowing everything down. And my mind just being more mindful of mm -hmm. right here, right now in the present. And the other stuff wasn't even in my spectrum. What I have to do later today, what happened earlier today, 
what has to happen tomorrow. It's just your focus right here. Right. <laughs> like body instantly qualms. You know, the past couple of days for me, I'll be honest with you, Janice, it was a little stressful. And oh. you, so I was like trying to lean into the intuition and just trust things. And oh, just, I think I saw your video. You were talking. Yeah. And just let things go and just be in the moment. And this is a gift. What you do, if somebody's listening and it's like, I don't know, rewind this, do this breath work exercise. It really, it does work. Right. Um, and it just brings you back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the more that we allow fear and worry into our lives, it takes us away from this present moment. It's pretty normal we do that, but but to have ways that you recognize it and begin, you know, to, oh, well, that's what I'm doing now. Right. Let's take a moment and pause and just get back out. What are your, some of your recipes for longevity in life for yourself besides breathing? Breathing is key. <laughs> um, actually, um, sometimes we're troubled. I think we don't um, have acceptance that it's all right to be happy or feel well most all the time. And if we have patterns um, that we respond to um, that take us into worry or any kind of stress or fear, um, we forget, we, we can get so involved. Um, and one of the things that um, I'm still learning, still working with every day is to take more time. Um, when I was talking about learning the breathing at first, I realized that it kind of felt like I had rushed through my life. Um, I, I learned to play the violin and when I was 13, it was the first time I heard a symphony. I attended a concert and I, I knew right away, <laughs> that's what I want to do. So, you know, it was a long ways from 13, but I, I practiced and probably wasted a bit of time <laughs> in my hurry, but I, I, one of the patterns I've recognized in my life is that um, probably from the very start of my life, I wasn't secure enough to, I hadn't been taught to be comfortable enough to take all the time you need and to be, to feel secure and safe and, and, and happier. <laughs> so no matter what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> If you don't have that, you kind of forge ahead and look for what you're trying to do always. And um, I've done a lot of things <laughs> in my life where that was the controlling pattern. And I did play in the symphony. I, I did get chosen and played for 15 years in a, in a, a symphony wonderful. In, in San Diego, California. So. Uh, it was, um, but in my life, I, I think when, when people say, oh, you know, how did that work? Um, it's just that suddenly I could take some time. And mm -hmm. I think that's the most key thing, no matter what your goals are or your values in, in life, to, to, um, to have the security and safeness. And and you know sometimes our lives are too um, difficult. We're, we're working hard. We, we're doing a lot of things, so it's easy to forget about that. And we get inundated with you know so many things on our plates. It's like we have to juggle so many balls in the air and not let one fall. Whether you have kids or you don't have kids, and work and life responsibilities and 
some days it feels like there's a million things going and you're like, I got to do them all. Right. And when in reality, it's like, what if I took five minutes today and did something for me and just paused? Yeah, that's good. That's very good. And I mean, it's taken yeah. me a long time to learn this. <laughs> you look <laughs> like at me. I'm still working on it. <laughs> We're all working on it. Yes. I know you also focus on getting outside, getting in nature, and you know that also helps immensely with health. What's your message, sort of, to the younger generation out there who's always saying, you know, I'm going to stay inside, I'm going to do this when we could be outside? Well, one of the things I think we learn when we slow down enough is that we're not alone in the world. You know, that, that it, it takes a while to, to feel really connected to everything. There are rocks and, you know, metal things and boards and things that are no longer, you know, have a life. They're not breathing like we do, but we are connected. And I, I, I think what happens when we go outside is, the energy is so different. The air is probably going to be better and fresher and more available. And we see other living things like the plants and trees. Um, we may see some people. We, you know, it it changes our world just to go out and if, if you garden to put your hands in the dirt and 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 touch into things that ground us if we're watering we have a whole other relationship with water um you know it it it's it's the slowing down again <laughs> and it makes a difference anybody who knows me personally they're like if it's the sun is out if it's blatantly a hair of a nice a day we're gonna find bobby outside Right. Like, no matter if it's freezing cold, I'll still be outside. You, you warm up with clothes and go out. Again. Or even like I've been known the neighbors can testify to this and my parents and boyfriend. Oh. Like I'll go. We were in Indiana over the winter and my family lives up there. And I would go out in shorts and a T-shirt doing like cold thermogenesis shoveling our driveway, shoveling the neighbor's driveway and everything else. And people are like, aren't you freezing? Who is this weirdo outside? And then I'm just like, nah, it's all good. And then I come to Texas to see more family and it gets really warm here and it's humid, but I'm still that person who is outside even on the 100 degree days. And they're like, who is she? And I'm like, guys, it's so nice out. Like, just come outside, but grab a book. Oh, wow. Another way that um, slowing down and also breathing then is when it's getting time that you're, you're going to go to bed and, uh, you know, hopefully go to sleep and rest. And um, when I did body work, I would, I, I was, I used my body in, or if I, had a big day physically. When I was ready to go to bed, my body wasn't quite ready. And even my breathing or mind. Um, so I started doing, you know, some breathing just before. Sometimes I do a little Qigong. And in Qigong, you pay attention to the movement and the breath. They, they um, one relies on the other. So um, when I would then get into bed, um, I, I, I could re relax, you know. Um, the breathing is really useful for sleep apnea or snoring or things that um, people have insomnia. They wake up and then they go into their thoughts and worries. So breathing is good for that. Just stop for a moment, you know, get into bed and then do your breathing exercises. 
turn do you do the breathing exercises at night with lights on or lights off uh, the the time i was thinking of when i started to do that the lights were out i w i had on what i was going to wear my nightgown or pajamas and um there were, I had this wonderful chair in my bedroom and I the lights were off and I would I would sit in it. Um, if I was doing Qigong, I would, might do that first. Then I'd sit in my chair. There, there is a breathing exercise where you close off one of your nostrils. Often people's nostrils are different. They mm -hmm. may even have some kind of deviation in the passageway. So you close off the one that is the most closed or the is getting the least air. And you just start breathing there very slowly, just breathing in. And at first your body doesn't notice that it's not getting as much air. And the minute you your body says, oh, I want more air, please stop, you know, then release and then go ahead your breathing has gotten smaller then it's gotten more relaxed and kind of stay with that for a little while i i did that quite a bit and I then was. who knows you may even put yourself right to sleep <laughs> often if people are if they're tired if they've been not sleeping well or not getting enough sleep when they start breathing exercise, they actually will fall asleep. The, the kind of worst breathing pattern um, that we can have is to breathe through our mouths. So we call that hyperventilating if you are breathing through your mouth or breathing big and fast. So um, the, the little exercise that I did earlier with you, uh, making the pauses, is a way to start being able to um, stop hyperventilating. So we teach a way we call the control pause. And in, you do that, you breathe in, breathe out, I'll do that. I won't hold it the whole way, but a goal would be that you could be relaxed enough with your diaphragmatic breathing that you could hold your breath out or let it be out without inhaling for maybe 40, 50, 60 seconds. So once you learn to pause and work up, uh, as a practice and become more relaxed in your nervous system, it's very comfortable to uh, pause that long. So, And I want to ask a question. You may or may not know the answer, but is this how free divers sort of prepare themselves with breath work on learning how to pause and pause for long spans of time? I don't know exactly, but they do train themselves. I, I know that, um, I, actually, I was listening to an interview with James Nestor, who wrote Breath, and he that was how he kind of came to get interested in writing that book. And he, um, I, he may have written an article. Anyway, he went and spent some time with them, yes. And um, when you were talking about going out with in your shorts to sh shovel the snow, yeah. uh, there's also a breathing method that that's a man called Wim Hof has, and he people barely dress and they go out in the snow and breathe and walk and do stuff. You know, it's a different method that it involves the breath. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have heard of Wim Hof's methods, but I haven't heard of the other ones. So thank you so much for sharing that sure. information. Because I've seen all the free divers. I got into scuba diving two years ago. Oh. Um, but free diving for me, I'm like, there's, it would take me forever. Like I would be, I would be like, no, thank you. <laughs> Don't don't put me in without an oxygen tank, please. <laughs> we all saw that film, or many of us. <clears throat> My um, what is the little animal that he? Um, my um, oh, I can't think. Um, my something teacher, and he did free oh, diving. Octopus teacher. Octopus, yeah, the octopus, yeah. That was amazing diving. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's really relaxing, but I noticed that my first few times doing it, I really had to focus on my breath. So I wasn't the weakest link in the group using all of my air at first and then other like <laughs> divers who had been diving because everybody has to leave at the same time, right. or at least your buddy has to leave with you. And for me, my buddy was my boyfriend's and he's been diving for years. And so if I let him like out of air 30 minutes into a 50 minute dive, I would, he'd be like, oh, we lost out on 20 more minutes of dive time. <laughs> um, but it is that learning curve of like, you got to learn how to control your breath and nervousness, anxiety. And when it all falls into place, it's a beautiful melody of sort of life symphony and how we're supposed to live in it. Hmm. I'm, I'm glad to know about that. Um, if people have had near drowning uh, events in their lives, what usually they need to work a little bit through that. There's a pattern that you know affects our breath. So mm -hmm. Even just to swim underwater, We'll have to work with that a little bit, but it does involve our breath a lot. Definitely. Janice, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? I'm kind of, um, I'm, I'd like to say, <laughs> I, I look outside, it rained all day yesterday and the sun is shining, <laughs> but that that's not news, but it's, it's it is news. It is <laughs> so much good news. It means it's time to go outside. It's go time outside. to enjoy it. It's yeah. take the afternoon tea outside, have water, go out into the garden. That's what that is a sign for. Um, Janice, it's been such a pleasure having you on today. And one question that I always ask my guests on the show is what has been one of the biggest blessings for you over this past year? Oh, this past year. Um, my, my, um, I discovered something about myself uh, around five years ago. Um, my husband passed away and I was, um, everything was fine. I, I, I entered a little period where I'd have to go. Okay, we're okay there. Okay there. I think that why am I feeling so strange and uneasy? And um, it took me several months to realize, oh, you're alone all pretty much much more time. Not that I'm alone all the time, but I realized that I had a a really early pattern. Uh, I won't go into that, but um, I never really, I've lived alone a few times, but that I needed to review that. <laughs> and when I moved here, I, it's entirely different from Los Angeles to a small town in Georgia. And um, I'm alone a great deal. And I've become comfortable with that. And it, it was a journey. <laughs> I, I've never been afraid to be alone, but there was just some things about it that um, I had to work on a little bit and source myself to to uh, succeed. And 
that 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 would be the one thing I tell you. That is so amazing, and like I can relate to this a lot because my grandmother has gone through the same thing. And it took her a little bit of time as it takes everybody to get over loss and grieving and you're in your routines of what you always did together. And then once that leaves and getting it to a place of where I'm okay with staying, my grandma is staying in her house by herself and in the country and handling it and so forth. Um, but it's taken time. And when you allow yourself to have that time and you've gotten to that next place of like, I'm okay with this. Right. <laughs> I'm okay with being by myself. Having people around is fantastic, but it's also, yeah. you know, having that mix of being like, okay, I'm okay at eating by myself or <laughs> things like this, you know? Yes, you're, you're, you're correct. Janice, where can people connect with you, find out more information about you, social media, handles, website, et cetera? I'm going to be doing, um, in June, I'm going to do a class. It'll be on some of the social media on using breathing for anxiety. Um, I'm, I don't have all planned yet. And I have a website. It's called jansbreathingzone.com. So you could find out more about me or contact me. I'd love to hear from you, really. And you can also find out more information about Janice on Instagram at Jan's Breathing and on TikTok at Jan's Breathing Zone. And if you guys are ever questioning if you are too old for TikTok, you are not. <laughs> Janice is on there. She is rocking it, guys. That's how we connected. I saw one of her videos and she is killing it. So go give her a follow. You will find all of the information on how to connect with Janice in the caption below in the show notes. You can link to find her anywhere and everywhere. Janice, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bobby. And as I leave everybody today, I just want to encourage you to take time, focus on your breathing, whether it's before bed tonight, if you've been up with lots of worries, or if you are, you know, a little extra stressed out today, like rewind this episode, focus on breathing, do these breathing exercises, and just get back in tune with your body. And this has been another episode of Coffee with Bobby and today's guest, Janice Lucan. Thank you so much. You're welcome.